The time has come. Capture 122 just came out with two brand new additions most users were waiting for a while. The panorama and the HDR merge functionality. Hi everyone, what's going on? Since you enjoyed so much my previous video, Capture One and Lightroom about differences in RAW engine and sharpening, I thought it was nice to make a new side-by-side -side comparison between the two, just focusing on the new features. My go-to software for stitching panels has always been Lightroom and I didn't have any issue with it so far. Quick and simple workflow, an excellent result. But what about Capture One? In this video, I'm going to focus on a few things like uh, differences in the UI between Capture One and Lightroom and the options available, the panorama and HDR merge performance in terms of uh, rendering, uh, merging time, and possible issues on stitching uh, a large number of images. Then the image quality when you look at uh, uh, the detail, the color, the artifacts, uh, and photos alignments, uh, and the output VNG file size. Let's start with the panorama stitching. I selected some different images captured with different cameras to better understand the capabilities of both software. But before diving into the test, let's take a look at Capture One's panorama interface. To access the panorama panel, we need to select at least a couple of images, and then we can find the merging function up here in the top bar menu under Image and Stitch to Panorama. Or just right click over one of the images on the browser window and select Stitch to Panorama. The panorama panel is uh, Pretty simple, with a clean interface and few frills. We've got the main big window with a panorama preview. On the top left corner, there is the projection section with four different options, spherical, cylindrical, perspective, and panini. So these are basically the same projection we find in Lightroom, except for the new panini. Right below, we have the stitched size module that allows you to reduce the exported file to a smaller size. This is actually a really cool addition especially when you need to experiment with the panel before deciding if it's worth uh, the high-res exporting. And on the bottom, we have the resizable film strip with the selected images, so pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy. On the other hand, Lightroom doesn't provide the Panini projection and the export resize option, but it features uh, other powerful stuff like the boundary warp slider to warp the image, filling the white gaps. So, you don't need to crop the panel, losing important areas of it. The auto crop function to crop the image, but creating a thinner panel and losing some details areas. The fill edges, which is another option that comes in handy to fill the white gaps when the warp become too noticeable. The auto settings will attempt to process the image. I would recommend you leave this unchecked and process it after the merging phase. And then the Create Stack, very handy to group the images used for the panel stitching into a single folder for a cleaner film strip view. After this general overview, let's have a look at the performance. I'm going to start with this sequence of three horizontal images taken with the Fujifilm X-T2, and our goal is to see if there is any difference between the two software in terms of rendering time and merging speed. I'm going to select the three shots, right-click, Stitch to Panorama. Capture One is now generating the preview using the spherical preset. It took about uh, seven seconds to render the preview. Now I'm gonna hit Stitch and let's see how long it takes to merge the images and create uh, our master DNG file. Okay, it took roughly 16 seconds. Let's try the Panini projection, even though it's uh, not meant to be used with this kind of images, but rather architecture. The process took over 40 seconds, so more than double the time. Now I'm gonna try merging the same sequence in Lightroom. I'm gonna select the same images, uh, right click, photo merge, and select panorama. The preview rendering time is a bit slower than in Capture One. Now we are gonna select the spherical option. I leave everything unchecked, I'm gonna select uh, merge. Here we go, the merging process took around 13 seconds, so it's a bit faster. Okay, without wasting your time going through different scenarios, I already made several tests, uh, and uh, here I have a chart, uh, nothing too technical, with some results on merging different types of files and the bigger sequences. For this specific panorama, as we have already seen, uh, to render the preview, Capture One took about seven seconds, and switching to the other projection took about three seconds for the cylindrical, roughly four seconds for the perspective, uh, and up to 19, 20 seconds for the Panini. As stitching time for the spherical, the stitching time is almost identical for the first three projections, took about uh, 16 uh, seconds. Whereas with the Panini stitching, the time increased three times up to around 43 seconds. 
The output DNG file in Capture One is uh, about 45% bigger than the DNG file created in Lightroom, and uh, that's quite a lot. Now let's move to the next example. This is a sequence of four horizontal images captured with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro uh, to create a vertical panel. Okay, as you can see, the differences between the two software are not huge, with a slight advantage uh, for Lightroom, but the file size now is about 76% uh, bigger than in Lightroom. As a third example, we have got five horizontal images from the Fujifilm GFX 50R medium format camera. Here we start to see a significant difference between the two. Capture One is a bit faster on the first preview rendering, but it takes more time on switching to the cylindrical and perspective uh, projection. By adding the three values, uh, they match the Lightroom performance, actually. The only exception is when we select the Panini projection, which takes uh, a huge amount of time just to render. I guess uh, the process is more uh, intense uh, for this new one. Capture One is still 40% slower than Lightroom on stitching the spherical projection, with the Panini stitching uh, at about 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Again, the DNG file is about 74% bigger than with Lightroom. Test number four, let's double the number of shots using a sequence of 10 vertical images from the Fujifilm X-T4. And as you can tell by the black areas, this is a handheld panel shot. The rendering performance are slightly better in Lightroom with a 55% difference in stitching speed and up to 3.28 minutes for the Panini then a 62% difference for the DNG file size. Now let's move to our last test. I tried pushing both software a little further, raising up the number of shots, and here we have 19 vertical images from my old Fujifilm X-T2, and something interesting happened during the test. Capture One failed, so it's not been able to render the preview with every projection. Lightroom did it smoothly with no issues, the exporting process as well, no issue at all. Overall, Capture One seems to be slower than Lightroom. Performance is almost equal working with a small number of images like three or four, but as we start adding more shots to the merge, Capture One starts struggling with a significant increase of the rendering and stitching time until stop rendering with 19 images. Another thing to take into account is that the exported DNGs are most of the time more than double the size of the Lightroom version, and in some cases quadruple. That's a lot. Now, let's have a closer look at the image quality of the exported files. Uh, the stitching process works really well. I can't see no issues, uh, so the result is pretty, pretty good. The first thing I notice uh, is a clear difference in colors. As you can see, colors look more saturated and also the contrast is higher. In the panel version, the details look crispier and crunchier, and the image looks quite good, but to be honest, I would rather prefer to adjust tones and colors by myself. In Lightroom, the merge panel looks absolutely identical to the source images. No differences in either in colors uh, nor contrast, uh, and that's actually what I expect. There are some other side effects I would point out. Aside from the unpredictable results uh, in a color and tones, uh, if you use styles, uh, your images are no more consistent throughout the collection. Let me show you an example. I'm gonna apply one of my styles uh, to this uh, single rough file we used to create the panorama, and then the same one to the panorama itself. As you can see, the effect uh, is totally different. The issue is even more emphasized when we want to change just the curve profile. Here I'm gonna change the curve, selecting uh, one of the Fujifilm simulations for the original file, and applying the same curve to the panel, the image turns out dull and nothing happens. So at the moment, uh, the curve profiles are not quite usable. I'm pretty sure it's something they will fix uh, on the next update. One last thing is mandatory to apply the light fall off at 100% and the lens correction before stitching the images. Otherwise, you will end up uh, with a, an uneven transition across the images. Here you can see the same panorama stitch with the lens correction plus uh, the light fall off at 100% and then without. The difference uh, is pretty dramatic. An interesting feature that Capture One provides is the drop down menu that offers a list of scale percentages to export our final panel in a smaller resolution. I quite like these additions and it's very handy when you're working with the uh, file sequences, uh, and uh, the resulting image uh, quality is absolutely great. Here on the right uh, is the table with some numbers to give you just a better idea of the differences in resolution, memory space, uh, and stitching time. Okay, let's move to the next addition, the HDR merge. 
bracketing is probably one of the most important techniques for a landscape photographer, and we have waited a long time for this feature in Capture One. Finally, with this new release, we can now merge multiple exposures. So let's take a look at the main HDR window. To access the HDR window, we need first to select the images we want to merge together. So I've got three bracketed exposure captured with the Fujifilm GFX 50R, a dark exposure for the highlights, the average one and the overexposed for the shadows. So let's click on the first one and shift click on the last one to select them all. Then right click and I'm gonna hit the new option merge to HDR. At this point, we have got two options to select. The auto adjust to apply some basic adjustments like uh, the exposure, contrast, brightness, and so forth. These are adjustments that can be obviously further tweaked or removed after the merge. I leave it alone for the moment. Then the auto align to align images that are not perfectly aligned. This comes in handy when you need to blend multiple images shot without a tripod. Enabling this function can slightly increase the merging time. As you can tell, Capture One doesn't provide any other custom setting but these two checkboxes. Lightroom features a couple of extra settings in this respect, like the handy deghost amount that helps to reduce the ghosting created from objects moving in the frame from shot to shot when you are shooting a bracketed sequence. Say, for example, people walking like uh, in this image or birds, uh, waves, uh, moving clouds. Uh, when images are merged together, you can end up with a semi-transparent ghost uh, of the object in different spots across the image. So, I'm really curious how good is Capture One at handling this stuff. The other missing option is a Create Stack to group the images used for HDR merging into a single film strips folder. Now, that being said, I'm gonna select Merge, and after a while, we got a perfectly merged DNG file with a wider dynamic range, so actually an HDR file. As we have done with the panoramic merge, let's have a look at the results to see what are the differences compared with the Lightroom HDR version. The first thing I can see is that Capture One prioritized the brightest exposure to generate the HDR preview, whereas the preview in Lightroom is very close to the average metered exposure. But let's try to adjust the high dynamic range sliders to rebalance the brightness of the image, equalizing the two versions and making a side-by-side -side overall comparison. Now I'm gonna zoom in quite a lot to see where differences lie. I turn to zero any sharpening and noise reduction on both software. Keep note, the Lightroom version is the merger without any deghosting applied. The blend is pretty good. Capture One uh, definitely blends uh, the exposure quite differently than Lightroom with a better detailed representation right off the bat. In the Capture One version though, I can see more color noise here on the water. Lightroom tends to soften some areas uh, apparently because of uh, the deghosting function turn off. We can see also some artifacts on the water ripples uh, on both versions. Uh, Capture One looks much better, but the issue on the spectral highlights, uh, even if at a lower level, is still there. Now, comparing these two images with the deghosting applied at the medium strength, the artifacts in Lightroom are completely gone. This is the big plus of having this additional functionality. However, if we have a look uh, not at the water, but at this zone of the image, uh, even with the deghosting applied in Lightroom, we still have some weird artifacts. Capture One instead looks perfect. I have another example of three bracketed exposure capture handheld, and even though I activated the auto line and deghosting, both Lightroom and Capture One show some ghosting around the subject. In terms of merging time, I prepared a couple of charts. Uh, the first one is about the, the example we have just seen with three shots from the GFX 50R. Capture One took about 41-42 seconds to generate the DNG file, whereas Lightroom took 21 seconds. But we have to take into account the preview rendering in Lightroom, which is about 15 seconds, so the total amount is around 36 seconds. Again, the resulting file size in Capture One is much, much bigger than in Lightroom, about 51% more. Another example with six exposures, 30 seconds for Capture One and 19 seconds plus eight seconds for the rendering, so 27 seconds for Lightroom with an output DNG of 120 megabyte for Capture One versus 88 of Lightroom. Overall, these new two features are a nice step forward for Capture One and its users. Don't get me wrong, I mean, even though both new additions are not yet fully mature, we probably need uh, to wait a little longer for an update. I think they will make many photographers happy, making this software more complete. As I said, there are some uh, aspects I think need to be improved, like uh, the discoloration, the maximum number of shots on panorama blending, uh, 
some additional equivalent features like the boundary warp and fill edges, the issue with the film simulation and a few other. If you want to learn more about some of the main differences between these two programs, I recommend watching this video from the channel. If you are a Capture One or Lightroom user, let me know what you think about this new update. If you have any questions, uh, drop me a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful, and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!